My name is Kim Akush and I own Jetsum Technologies, which makes the KISS rebreathers and I also own KISS Manufacturing, which is a, a full machine shop. The growth in the industry was probably more growth at the start of it, the industry, with the Draeger becoming mainstream, easy for people to buy at a decent price point, something something fun, new and exciting for the recreational divers. So I think at the beginning there was strong growth and then I think it tapered out. We still noticed a number of years ago when we're doing the trade shows, especially the DEMA show, which is an industry show, we had so many average dive shop owners come up to us and say, okay, I've figured out that these rebreathers aren't going away and now I need to educate myself. So we can definitely see every year there's more and more interest from the average shop. I believe that Patty coming into the rebreather market is a game changer and I think it has to be and I think anybody looking at it logically will see that. They are easily the biggest training agency in the world that they've decided to make this step means that there will be much greater worldwide interest in rebreather systems as the dive shop owners around the world are going well if Patty's getting into it it's here to stay so that is that is the key to letting the dive shops know that we're a real industry and we're not going anywhere the Patty system has two types of systems for closed circuit rebreathers, the R program for recreational and the T program for technical. We do not build an R type rebreather and we make mechanical rebreathers and we feel those are very safe. The R type systems are electronic self-run systems that we don't endorse. We have a recreational semi-closed system called the KISS Gem Diving System when we are actively talking to Patty about a course for that and have been for some time and uh, that doesn't fall into those programs. It falls into a distinctive specialty program. It's because the industry is growing and changing and we're such a new industry I think our challenge as manufacturers is to work better and closer with the training agencies to ensure that our needs are met, our minimum training standards are within the training programs and that the training agencies have their own standards and that their standards are met and we need to find a better way to communicate so that we can produce together some really good instructors, instructor trainers and divers. With regards to open circuit fatalities compared to rebreather fatalities, it's a really hard question to answer because there's so many parameters and how do you accurately compare so I really feel that when you do see some stats out there really take it with a grain of salt because you've got it's it's unknown to me personally about open circuit statistics because I don't follow it that much but how accurate are the statistics that are out there and you know if they say there's a hundred divers in this area are they really diving are they diving once a year are they diving 200 times a year and how often someone dives makes a difference in what the chances are of them having an accident. So I'm, I'm, I'm very careful when talking about statistics. I personally think that yes, rebreathers are more dangerous. However, the types of diving these people are doing is also way more extreme. They're diving quite a bit more often. They're going deeper, staying longer. So it's going to seem like there's more and it's also a much, much smaller industry. So when an accident happens, people hear about it. When an open circuit accident happens, there's a little blurb in the newspaper and nobody really talks about it that much unless they know the people or the family involved. And everybody knows about checklists and our industry, our divers, people talk about it, all the manufacturers, we have them and we say you have to use them. But the fact of the matter is very few divers are using checklists. I found out recently at a trade show a couple of weeks ago that and this is to the best of my knowledge, that with all the fatalities and rebreathers, none of the victims had a checklist in with their belongings. Not one of them used a checklist before their dive. And that's shocking for a customer to buy a good quality open circuit system. They don't have to spend much more money, if anything, to really get into diving a good rebreathing system. Our newest diving system, the KISS Gem, which is a very recreational system, it starts at $3,500. And there, to my knowledge, there is no other system that you can get into diving a brand new rebreather for, for that much money. 
The appeal of a rebreather to a sport diver, I think a few years ago it was purely the benefits of the rebreather, which is warm, moist air to breathe, longer bottom times, you know, the perfect partial pressure of oxygen in your breathing gas at all times, and being able to get close to the animals. Now, as the technology's been out for a while, and the prices are coming down, and it's become more mainstream, I think it's it's still the original ideas, but also the fact that we are going to be around, and this is the way the industry is going, so people don't want to get left behind. They want to feel they're part of of the new technology. They're easier to learn, the units are simpler, they're not as complex, they're not as dangerous. And I think that's a key point too, when you can develop a product that is safer, that doesn't give people the fear factor of a fully closed system, you know, our, our sales are really answer that question. Our sales are incredible on the GEM unit. So we can see the demand we have because it is inexpensive, lightweight, easy to use and safe.